Maricela Escobedo, a former nurse, was on a mission to unearth what happened to her youngest daughter, Ruby. Months would pass without any news of her daughter. Finally, when news did come, it was not from police detectives, but from a stranger. My mom received a call from this youngster, and he said that he was going to tell us something very, very hard, and he started telling us that Sergio killed my sister. Sergio killed your sister. Yeah. Juan says that youngster told him the gory details of how Ruby's boyfriend, Sergio, had enlisted neighbors to help him dispose of Ruby's body. He took his brother and some other guy to the apartment and uh, took my, my sister's body to a trash dump and burned her body. I cannot imagine hearing something like that about a loved one. It was something so horrible that, you know, we, we didn't know what to do. Sergio was Ruby's boyfriend, the father of her little girl. Was he capable of killing her? We learned that as a child, he'd been abandoned by his parents and dumped at that same orphanage we saw earlier where they remember him as a troubled kid. But it's Sergio's more recent past that linked him to the crime. According to this police report, just after Ruby disappeared and long before Maricela started searching for her, Sergio had actually told his stepfather that in a jealous rage, he had beaten Ruby to death. The stepfather went to the police, and Sergio repeated his confession that he'd killed Ruby. But since the police found no physical evidence, the case was dropped. And they didn't bother to tell Maricela that someone had actually confessed to killing her daughter. None of this surprises reporter Sandra Rodriguez. Did the police properly investigate this case? I don't think so. No. Why not? First, uh, because they don't look for the victim as far as the mother report the missing. So the mother reports... The missing. And they don't seem to do anything. Records from the case show that police didn't bother interviewing some people Sergio had confessed to and that they failed to search the van that he allegedly used to transport Ruby's body, leading to a crucial lack of physical evidence. Why do you think the police were not more aggressive about investigating your sister's disappearance? I believe because in Juarez, they don't care for, uh, for, the, for the people, for the families. There's so much going on over there. Drugs and killing, you know, from the cartels. So they don't really care for other things happening in that city. But the question is, with Sergio actually confessing, why wouldn't they try harder to gather evidence against him? Maricela would soon find the answer. For now, the former nurse turned entrepreneur put her grief to use in a public campaign to bring Sergio to justice. Maricela was now raising Ruby's daughter and pushed her in a stroller wherever she went, gaining media attention along the way. This man didn't just end my daughter's life. He destroyed a whole family. He left my granddaughter without her mother, and he took my daughter's right to live. Ruby became kind of a poster victim for all that is wrong in Juarez, how police apathy can allow evil to go unpunished. Maricela knew that if she wanted justice, she'd have to force the police, even embarrass them, into action. But even if Mexico's local cops have a reputation for incompetence, the federal police and military claim they're doing a better job fighting the drug cartels. Starting with the thousands of guns they've managed to take away from them. Overall, the government has confiscated 67,000 guns in the last four years. Today alone, more than 450 will be destroyed. But how do you stop the flood? For every gun captured, many more are smuggled in. Many from the United States, where guns are easier to purchase legally. Where there are 6,600 gun stores along the border. In Mexico, believe it or not, there's only one gun shop in the entire country. That's right, only one. It's run by the military and sells about 30 guns a day to private citizens for hunting and home protection. The highest caliber gun you can buy here is a 38. 
And there's one more thing. Here in Mexico, civilians can only own one gun at a time. Even so, the river of weapons keeps flowing. In fact, the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, as part of an undercover operation, actually allowed hundreds of guns to be smuggled to the Mexican drug cartels. The U.S. ATF let arms in deliberately uh, in order to trace them, track them. Which former Mexican Foreign Minister Jorge Castaneda thinks resulted in more Mexican deaths. It makes people in Mexico very irritated to say, Jesus, the Americans not only don't do anything to stop the guns from entering, they push them. The ATF told us it's investigating. And that's just one of the reasons many Mexicans are at their wit's end. Over the past four years, they've seen organized crime killing spread like a cancer to areas where it had not been. Which brings us back to Maricela. Despite the fact that Ruby's murderer had confessed nine months earlier, the police had still not brought the killer to justice. We'll continue fighting. And she was about to find out how difficult that would be in a place like Juarez.